What are some weird, real-life X-file type mysteries? The insatiable Terrari, a French man who could not stop eating. He was said to have an incredibly large mouth with stained teeth and supposedly had a visible vapor rising off of his body. His parents kicked him out as a teenager because he was literally eating them out of house and home. He ate any and everything, including live animals, stones, silverware, anything he could get his hands on. The French military even tried employing him as a courier to smuggle documents by eating them. No doctor was able to find a cause or a cure to his appetite. He was eventually kicked out of the military hospital where they were studying him after falling under suspicion of eating a 14-month-old child that went missing from the same hospital. A reasonable suspicion, since they caught him trying to eat dead bodies in the morgue on several occasions. Skinwalker Ranch is a ranch in northeast Utah where in the 90s the owner reported weird phenomena like giant wolf-like creatures attacking their cattle and taking multiple rifle shots without flinching, then apparently vanishing into thin air, floating orbs of light, Bigfoot-like creatures, cattle mutilations, etc. A team of scientists from the National Institute of Discovery Science, including Colm Kelleher, who wrote a book about the occurrences, camped out on the ranch and reportedly witnessed much of the same including what appeared to be windows opening into other worlds and a creature climbing through, poltergeist-like, trickster activity, such as surveillance camera being pulled down and gaffer tape being meticulously unwrapped from the cables, all while an adjacent camera picked up absolutely nothing. The ranch is on land infamous among the local native tribe as being haunted by skinwalkers, supposedly powerful shape-shifting sorcerers, and has a long history of weird happenings going back decades at least. The team of scientists, though they all experienced a lot of weird shit, were never able to gather any robust data to report back to NIDS. They got the feeling whatever they were observing knew it was being observed and did not want to be discovered. The book by Kelleher is Hunt for the Skinwalkers. Science confronts the unexplained at a remote ranch in Utah. It's a damned fascinating read. A mysterious case from South Korea that had never been solved called the Frog Boys about a group of boys, five, gone missing without their corpse remaining nor any evidence found for about 20 years. Even soon after a massive police search in the whole area foot by foot, nothing was found. However, 20 years later, their remaining have been spotted and discovered just right near their home area, which have already been searched for thoroughly. During this period, there were multiple theories and conspiracies. One professor also personally tried playing detective and accused one of the parents for being the offender with some logical contents and accusations. Hallucinations at Sea So, this has been scientifically explained, but it's intensely creepy. Coming from a family of sailors, both my father and grandfather had similar experiences. My father described an incident where he saw floating coffins covering the entire sea. My grandfather described an incident where a swarm of crows were following the boat and people riding on motorcycles besides the boat. The Monkey Man would have made a great episode. Summary from Wikipedia. In May 2001, reports began to circulate in the Indian capital New Delhi of a strange monkey-like creature that was appearing at night and attacking people. Eyewitness accounts were often inconsistent but tended to describe the creature as about 4 feet, 120 centimeters tall, covered in thick black hair, with a metal helmet, metal claws, glowing red eyes, and three buttons on its chest. Others, however, described the monkey man as having a more vulpine snout and being up to eight feet tall and muscular. It would leap from building to building like a parkour enthusiast. Still, others have described it as a bandaged figure, as a helmeted thing. Theories on the nature of the monkey man ranged from an avatar of the Hindu god Hanuman to an Indian version of Bigfoot. Many people reported being scratched, and two, by some reports, three, people have even died when they leapt from the tops of buildings or fell down stairwells in a panic caused by what they thought was the attacker. At one point, exasperated police even issued artists' impression drawings in an attempt to catch the creature. The entire incident has been described as an example of mass hysteria. For a mystery very close to the X-Files, you need to look at something like the Paul Benowitz case. He lived and worked close to the Kirtland Air Force Base 
and intercepted what he believed to be alien communications at what he called the Dulce base. He very well may have been the target of a government operation where he was fed false information and documents verifying his alien hypothesis by intelligence agents working for the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. He was pushed to the brink and ended up in a mental health hospital, and his story is full of X-File-esque intrigue, like photographs of landed UFOs he took from the air. He was a private pilot, being stolen from his house. There have been a few books written about it, the best being Project Beta by Greg Bishop. Edit. Kirtland, not Kirkland, though Kirkland would be a great theme park. When I was a kid, like two-ish, I had this dream of a man I called Big Daddy because he looked like a large version of my dad. In the dream, he lifted me up over his head, held me there for what seemed like a few seconds, and dropped me. I recalled the dream vividly, but not the aftermath, which my parents filled me in on. They heard a super loud thud come from my room, so they ran in and found me several feet away from my bed, and both my ears were bleeding. My bed was a car bed that was only about a foot off the ground, and it had walls on the side to prevent falling out of it. There was no way falling out of my bed would have made that loud of a noise, let alone the likelihood of me falling out of it to begin with. I'm pretty sure I was abducted. After that day, I had extremely vivid nightmares about black panthers, not sure why that creature, watching me from outside my window or in the house sometimes. They happened a few times per month and completely stopped when we moved. I remember those dreams more than any other dreams I've ever had in my life. I tell this story all the time as my campfire ghost story, but I've always been tempted to get hypnotic regression therapy to see if I could look past the disguises of whatever it was that was in my dreams to see what was really happening. The Hoyabachi Forest in Romania Visitors to the forest often report intense feelings of anxiety and the feeling of being constantly watched. Moreover, the local vegetation is somehow bizarre in appearance, like something out of a make-believe story with strangely shaped trees and unexplained charring on tree stumps and branches. The forest was named after a shepherd that disappeared in the area with a flock of 200 sheep. Most people who live near the forest are afraid to enter it due to the stories and legends that have been handed down. They believe that those who visit the site will never return back home. Many of the locals who have been brave enough to venture into the forest complained of physical harm, including rashes, nausea, vomiting, migraines, burns, scratches, anxiety, and other unusual sensations. I read one blog where they guessed that the presence of copper mines nearby may mean there are heavy metals down below, accounting for electromagnetic activity and other explainable causes for the weirdness. The Celestial Phenomenon Happening Over Nuremberg in 1561 It happened randomly in Nuremberg's sky, and it appeared as if it was a type of aerial battle with spheres, cylinders, and at the end of the spectacle, a black triangular object fell from the sky, and a crash was heard from outside the city. This still does not have an official explanation. UFO conspiracy theorists everywhere rejoice. The Torrid Mystery a man shows up at an airport in Tokyo, and his passport says that he's from a country called Torred. When asked to point to Torred on a map, he points to Andorra, but is confused because he had never heard of Andorra before. The company that he claims to work for has no idea who he is, even though he had copious amounts of documentation to prove it. He was held in a hotel room, guarded by two policemen, while the police investigated the case. He disappeared from his room, even though they were several stories up with no balcony. The Tamanshud case. A man washed up on Australia's shores who is completely and to this day unidentified, cause of death unknown, and he was carrying a booklet with him that had a cryptid message to this day is still without meaning. A suitcase believed to be his was also discovered, with odd objects inside that seemed to make no sense to this man's apparent possession of them, some of the items being red felt slippers, a stenciling brush for marking ship cargo, and a pair of trousers with sand in the cuffs, along with makeshift weapons. The Mary Celeste was an American merchant brigantine that was found adrift and deserted in the Atlantic Ocean off the Azores Island, Portugal, on December 4, 1872, by the Canadian brigantine Di Gracia. She was in disheveled but seaworthy condition, under partial sail, with no one on board, and her lifeboat missing. The last log entry was dated 10 days earlier, 
she had left New York City for Genoa on November 7th and on discovery was still amply provisioned. Her cargo of denatured alcohol was intact and the captain and crew's personal belongings were undisturbed. None of those who had been on board, the captain and his wife, their two-year-old daughter and the crew of seven were ever seen or heard from again. There's one I don't hear often about, and yet it happened right in the middle of a downtown of a major Canadian city. There isn't too many videos of it because it happened before people massively had cell phones, but yeah, Montreal Mothership. This thing was above downtown, seen by reporters and cops, and the RCMP, along with NASA even being called. It was massive, and described as a mothership, stayed up there for three hours, and the military and airports had no fucking idea what was going on. It then moved east across half the city and caused a power failure. There isn't much about it online as, again, this happened in 1990. But yeah, I'm bringing this up as I've lived there for a while, so it's one I heard a lot of talk about, but I think it's pretty weird. After 18 years of teaching junior high school history, my dad became a trucker, long haul type. He touched the contiguous 48 states. One time, he picked up a load from the defunct Hanford nuclear facility to take to Nevada or Arizona. Unlike all the other loads he hauled this time, he had a two black SUV escort. Has to stop at a way station. We'll handle this, sir. Has to pull over to check the load. We'll handle this, sir. Dad never found out what he hauled that time. Always struck me as odd, creepy government shenanigans. The Hinterkaifeck Murders A few days prior to the crime, farmer Andreas Gruber told neighbors about discovering footprints in the snow leading from the edge of the forest to the farm, but none leading back. He also spoke about hearing footsteps in the attic and finding an unfamiliar newspaper on the farm. Furthermore, the house keys went missing several days before the murders. None of this was reported to police prior to the attack. Six months earlier, the previous maid had left the farm, claiming that it was haunted. The new maid, Maria Baumgartner, arrived on the farm on the day of the attack and was killed hours later. Exactly what happened on that Friday evening cannot be said for certain. It is believed that the older couple, as well as their daughter Victoria and her daughter, Kazelia, were all lured into the barn one by one where they were killed. The perpetrators then went into the house where they killed two-year-old Joseph who was sleeping in his cot in his mother's bedroom, as well as the maid, Maria Baumgartner, in her bedchamber. The Spontaneous Fires of Caneto di Caronia in Sicily Basically, things just started catching fire in this town and nobody could figure out why. It seems to stop for a while, but then will start again. Seems to always be electrical appliances, but the city shut down power and they kept happening. Scientists are sure it's because of static electricity, but nobody knows why it happens so frequently in one place. Pretty cool mystery. Radio astronomer here. A lot of people have by now heard about the WOW signal, particularly if you hang out a lot on Reddit, but there are many other strange signals we've heard from the sky and we can't explain. One cool example is the Great Galactic Burper. In short, back in 1998, radio astronomers pointed towards the galactic center, heard five loud bursts of radiation that were 10 minutes long or so, with 77 minutes separating the blasts. It was really weird. No one knows what caused it, and no one has ever heard this or a similar burst ever again. Pretty crazy stuff. I'm probably late to the party, but this is an ongoing case in the UK right now. Some old guy traveled miles away from home to die miles up a mountain by a reservoir. He had no ID on him, and recent tests have found his blood was traced with an illegal rat poison not accessible in the UK. He has a plate in his leg from Pakistan, but doesn't appear to be of Pakistani descent. He was also dressed really smartly and asked locals for directions to the mountain in bad weather. More recently, a theory has come to light, suggesting he might be some way involved with a plane crash that happened on the side of the mountain in 1946. Hence, why that particular location and so far from home Nobody has come forward to say he's missing either, which adds more light to the theory that perhaps he lost someone in the accident and wanted his final resting place to be where theirs was. Either way, it has the UK puzzled. Futility or the Wreck of the Titan A book written more than a decade before the Titanic sank that, if I remember right, 
pretty much nailed down all of the details of the Titanic's construction and demise to a pretty damn accurate degree. From the skeptics of the dimensions of the boat to the descriptor unsinkable, it basically goes on to forecast the time, date, and location of the wreck, and even the side of the boat the iceberg hit. Apparently, the death tolls were all in the right ballpark as well. As a tie-in to X-Files, a similar thing kinda happened with the pilot episode of the X-Files spin-off series, The Lone Gunman. Six months before 9-11 happened, the show's pilot episode, entitled Pilot, depicted a rogue element deep within the US halls of power, secretly plotting to remotely pilot and crash a passenger jetliner into the Twin Towers in order to blame it on terrorists and initiate a never-ending series of lucrative wars in the Middle East. But the lone gunman saved the day.